the universe, disorganized, chaotic, dynamic. In this mesh of physical, chemical and organic reactions, nature does its best to try to cope with material disorder. But how does nature work? Mathematics is the language of nature. We must first understand that molecules and matter have peculiar ways of behaving in space. Nature follows simple rules that can generate strikingly complicated patterns. A fractal is a geometry which repeats itself on various scales, allowing a form to grow with similar structural characteristics throughout its totality. Fractals provide us with some of the most interesting patterns in nature, which follow a very simple set of rules, but create a great variety of forms. Trees are fractal structures, following one of nature's basic rules, the principle of less work. Growing its roots and branches in a fractal way is the best and quickest way to organize form to cover the greatest possible area in order to obtain more resources. Cracks are the opposite of trees. It is a way of reorganizing quickly and efficiently to an environment that is quickly losing resources. Fractals are just one of the numerous mechanisms nature can use from its toolbox. But what happens when you have an external force constraining your space? To fill up a plane with identical equal-sided and equal-angle cells, you only have three choices, a square, a triangle and a hexagon. Bubbles grow that way because of their material properties. Water needs to arrange in the most efficient way while still holding an amount of air inside. Instability from outer forces helps create patterns by forcing the existing molecules to arrange in more efficient ways. When bubbles assemble, they organize and reorganize themselves regularly in order to maintain balance. These structures have inevitability about them, being driven by the basic physics and chemistry of growth. Bees. Organisms creating form by knowledge lack evolution of physical processes. Honeycombs form the way they do not because bees are extremely intelligent animals, but because wax behaves much the same way as the stacking of bubbles. Grains behave similar to bubbles and honeycombs in that they follow physical laws. Grains assemble and create patterns due to their relative weight and surface friction. These examples illustrate how gravity combined with grains of similar characteristics create natural Voronoi cell patterns. of Zhubatinsky reaction. Chemical reactions help us to understand nature's behavior in pattern formation and introduces us to the actual way organisms grow. These reactions behave as if they were alive and organized, always knowing when and where to move. It is much more simple than that. There is a catalytic reaction happening, an activator inhibitor scheme. Molecules tend to both attract and repel each other. 
When the ones that attract become too dense, they start repelling each other, giving way to a dynamic process. As long as there is energy, the reaction could grow indefinitely, continuously rearranging itself. What if, instead of water molecules, we had cells? Can the complicated blueprint for our human shape really be imprinted on an embryo by chemicals that are blindly diffusing, reacting, activating and inhibiting? For many animals, the organic reactions that build their skin are the products of the chemical reactions between living cells, which explains the appearance of stripes when it's linear and of spots when it's non-linear. The dynamics of the growth process select its own solution. Why do spots and stripes change? Well, nature is flexible and although it uses an established set of parameters, the physical environment and tapering shape of the organism affects pattern formation. More than a set of rules, it is a set of behaviors. Why do we study pattern formation? The classification of pattern elements helps when we come to the question of how patterns arise, because it means that we can focus on basic symmetry systems and only afterwards worry about how these have become elaborated into distorted forms. Nature is indifferent to aesthetics. Pattern formation has a purpose. Its implications on the architectural practice are quite obvious. Parametric design and the exploration of different forms lead the way in today's technology-driven world. Nature, however, provides us with a set of parametric design systems that have been tested time and again. The digitalization and understanding of these processes will lead to the ultimate goal of driving away from using patterns as purely ornamental and into a more organic and informed world of parametric design.